Chapter 6. Models and Theories In modern brain studies, both structure and function can be examined through various imaging methods. CAT scans utilize x-rays to generate detailed cross-sectional images of the body or brain, providing valuable diagnostic information about injuries, tumors, or other abnormalities. MRI employs strong magnetic fields and radio waves to produce highly detailed images of internal organs and tissues, making it particularly useful for detecting structural abnormalities in the brain and body. EEG records the electrical activity in the brain, using electrodes placed on the scalp, aiding in the diagnostic of epilepsy, sleep disorders, and monitoring brain activity during various tasks. MEG measures the magnetic fields produced by neuronal activity in the brain, offering real-time information about brain function and activity localization. The integration of brain structure and function is possible through techniques like fMRI, which, unlike traditional MRI, visualizes active brain regions by tracking blood flow. PET scans, though lacking structural detail, complement CAT scans and MRIs by highlighting active brain areas through glucose injection. These methods collectively contribute to a deeper understanding of the brain's intricacies. Temperament, heredity, and genes play a crucial role in shaping individuals. Temperament distincts from personality, refers to inherent emotional reactivity and sociability, often established before exposure to environmental influences and persisting throughout life. Heredity, the passing of traits from parents to offspring through genes, involves approximately 20,000 genes contributing to various characteristics. Twin studies and adoption studies offer insights into the interplay of genetics and environment. In classical twin studies, both monozygotic, identical, and dizygotic, fraternal, twins raised in the same household are compared. Monozygotic twins, originating from a single fertilized egg, share 100% of genes, while dizygotic twins, from separate eggs, share 50%, like regular siblings. Despite sharing similar prenatal environments in parents, regular siblings may differ due to varying parenting and age factors. To elucidate complex conditions like schizophrenia, researchers analyze the contributions of nature versus nurture. By comparing rates of disorder in monozygotic versus dizygotic twins, researchers can discern genetic versus environmental influences. Higher rates in identical twins suggest a genetic component while similar rates across both types indicate environmental factors. However, limitations exist, such as the likelihood of identical twins being treated more similar than fraternal twins. Adoption studies further dissect genetic and environmental influences. Comparing adopted children to both biological and adoptive families reveals the role of each. Challenges arise from incomplete information about biological families and non-random adoption processes. Even when identical twins are raised in different environments, adoptive families may share similarities. Despite these complexities, twin and adoption studies provide valuable insights into the interplay of genetics and environment in shaping individuals. Heritability measures the extent to which differences in traits can be attributed to genetic variation. For example, if we say the heritability of intelligence is 50%, it means that 50% of the variability in intelligence can be explained by genetic differences, not that intelligence itself is 50% genetic. This concept is illustrated by scenarios where boys raised in identical environments still exhibit differences in IQ, suggesting a high heritability close to 100%, or by genetically identical quadruplets raised in different environments, where variability is attributed to environmental factors and heritability is near 0%. Gene-environment interactions further shape traits, highlighting the interplay between nature and nurture. 
For instance, an attractive baby may receive more attention and develop better social skills compared to a less attractive baby, despite both having genes predisposing them to depression. Similarly, phenylketonuria, caused by mutations in a gene encoding a liver enzyme, demonstrates how environmental factors like diet can, mit can mitigate genetic risks as infants placed on a phenylalanine-free diet can largely avoid the associated brain problems. Regulatory genes play a crucial role in gene expression, influencing how proteins are coded. While only a small percentage of genes directly code for proteins, the majority regulate protein coding. Epigenetics, such as the addition of methyl groups to genes, can alter gene expression without changing the underlying DNA sequence providing insight into how genes contribute to traits and behaviors beyond traditional genetic coding mechanisms. The adaptive value of behavioral traits lies in their role in maintaining homeostasis. The balance within organisms is responsible to their environment. Ethology, the study of animal behavior, examines overt behaviors, observable actions that can be innate, learned, or complex. Innate behavioral traits are gener genetically programmed behaviors encoded in DNA. These behaviors are intrinsic, meaning they are present even when an organism is raised in isolation, stereotypic, inflexible, and consuming. Examples include reflexes, like the knee-jerk response, orientation behaviors such as kinesis and taxis, and fixed action patterns performed without interruption. An example of an innate behavior is nausea in pregnant women, which helps them avoid toxic foods during critical periods of development. Learned behavioral traits, on the other hand, are acquired through observation or experience and are not inherited. These behaviors are extrinsic, absent when animals are raised in isolation, permutable, adaptable, and progressive improving over time with practice. Social skills are an example of learned behaviors. Complex behaviors often lie on a spectrum between innate and learned. For instance, the ability of insects to fly may start as an innate behavior, but can become more efficient through learning and experience. This spectrum highlights the dynamic nature of behavior adaptation in response to environmental challenges and opportunities. Motivation and attitudes encompass various psychological concepts that drive human behavior and shape our perceptions. The physiological concept of positive and negative feedback mechanisms govern how our bodies respond to stimuli. Positive feedback increases the production of a product, while negative feedback inhibits its production. Negative feedback serves to maintain homeostasis by regulating physiological processes. Drive reduction and cognitive theories delve into the reasons behind human motivation. Five schools of thought we explore different aspects from evolutionary instincts to cognitive thought processes. Drive reduction theory posits that needs energize drives, which motivate behaviors to reduce those needs and maintain homeostasis. Maslow's hierarchy of needs organizes these motivations into a pyramid, prioritizing physiological needs like food and water before higher order needs like self-actualization. Incentive theory focuses on the role of rewards in motivating behavior. Rewards, whether tangible or intangible, positively reinforce actions, increasing the likelihood of their reputa repetition. Biological and sociocultural factors influence behaviors related to food, sex, and drugs with both physiological processes and social influences shaping our actions and preferences in these areas. Components of attitude involve affective, behavioral, and cognitive aspects, collectively known as the ABC model of attitude. Affective components involve emotional responses. Behavioral components pertain to actions or behaviors towards an object or subject and cognitive components encompass beliefs and thoughts. Attitudes influence our perceptions and behaviors in various contexts, shaping our interactions with the world around us. Attitudes 
have a significant impact on our behavior, and understanding how they influence our actions is crucial. Four theories shed light on this relationship. The theory of planned behavior suggests that before we act, we consider the implications of our intentions. These intentions are shaped by our attitudes towards the behavior, subjective norms, whatever, what others think, and perceived behavioral control. So how, how easy or how hard it is to control the behavior. The attitude of behavior process model highlights how events trigger our attitudes, which combined with external knowledge determine our behavior. For example, Tommy avoids junk food at home because he believes it's unhealthy, influenced by his family's health issues. The prototype willingness model identifies six factors in influencing behavior. Past behavior, attitudes, subjective norms, intentions, willingness, and prototypes. We often mimic behavior based on prototypes or models. The elaboration likelihood model for persuasion explores how information is processed, either centrally, which is based on argument quality, or peripherally, which is based on by superficial cues. Social influences are less impactful when behavior is observed over time. Attitudes are self-reflected upon or actions are specific. Behavior can also shape attitudes. The foot-in-the-door phenomenon it illustrates how agreeing to small actions can lead to compliance with larger ones over time, akin to a door being gradually pushed open. Role-playing, seen in Zimbardo's prison experiment, demonstrates how assuming a new role initially feels fake, but eventually becomes genuine, altering attitudes. Public declarations and justification of effort also influence attitudes. For instance, people are more likely to follow through on commitments made publicly, and they might justify unwanted actions by focusing on the effort invested. The cognitive dissonance theory reveals how conflicting thoughts or beliefs can cause discomfort, leading to adjustments in our behaviors or beliefs. To alleviate this discomfort, individuals may modify their cognitions, trivialize the conflict, add new thoughts to justify their actions, or outright deny the conflict. We naturally seek harmony between our thoughts, actions, and words. So when inconsistencies arise, cognitive dissonance occurs. The situational approach in social psychology shifts focus from stable personality traits to the influence of changing environmental circumstances of behavior. It emphasizes that individuals behave differently depending on their situations, highlighting the interaction between the individual and their environment. This approach underscores the complexity of, behavior, of predicting behavior based on a single situation and acknowledges the variability in human behavior across contexts. Attribution, the process of inferring the causes of events or behaviors, plays a significant role in understanding human interactions. We often make attributions about others based on the situation they're in, considering factors like consistency, distinctiveness, and consensus. If someone's behaviors vary across situations and others behave similarly in the same situation, we attribute their actions to the environment, also known as situational. Conversely, if someone behaves consistently across different situations, we may attribute their behavior to more internal factors, known as dispositional. The landscape of personality theory offers various lenses through which to understand human behavior and development. The psychoanalytic theory, pioneered by Sigmund Freud, delves into the unconscious mind's influence on personality. Freud posited that unconscious thoughts, feelings, and early memories shape personality, driven by two instinctual forces, libido and the death instinct. Concepts such as projection, reaction formation, regression, and sublimation illustrate how individuals cope with conflicts between these forces, ultimately impacting their personal development. Freud's model, likened to an iceberg, divides the mind into the conscious, unconscious, and subconscious, also known as the id, ego, and superego. 
highlighting the interplay between these components. The id represents innate, primitive instincts and drives, seeking immediate gratification of desires without regard for social norms or consequences. The ego acts as the mediator between the id, superego, and external reality, balancing the id's impulses with the superego's moral standards to navigate the demands of the external world. In contrast to the humanistic theory, spearheaded by Carl Rogers, focuses on individuals' innate drive for self-actualization and emphasizes their inherent goodness. This theory diverges from Freud's determinism, asserting that people are self-motivated to improve and reach their full potential. Maslow's hierarchy of needs illustrates the progression towards self-actualization, while Roger emphasizes the importance of a growth-promoting climate characterized by genuineness and acceptance in nurturing personality development. The biological theory explores the role of genetics and brain processes in shaping personality. Evolutionary psychology examines mating strategies and behavioral tendencies influenced by genetic predispositions. Researchers like Hans Eisnick and C. Robert Cloninger link personality traits to specific brain systems and genetic markers, highlighting the interplay between biology and behavior. Behaviorist theory, associated with figures like Skinner and Pavlo, posits that personality is shaped by learned behavioral patterns influenced by the environment. Operant and classical conditioning illustrate how rewards, punishment, and environmental stimuli shape behavior over time. This deterministic view contrasts with psychoanalytic perspectives, focusing on observable behavior rather than the unconscious drives. Classical conditioning involves associating a neutral stimulus with an involuntary response, leading to a learned association between the two. Operant conditioning, on the other hand, relies on reinforcing or punishing behaviors to increase or decrease their likelihood of recurrence. Trait theory championed by Gordon Alport, Raymond Cachell, and Hans Eisnick, identifies stable predispositions towards certain behaviors as key components of personality. Alport categorized traits into cardinal, central, and secondary traits, while Cattell proposed 16 essential personality factors. Eisnick's model emphasizes three major dimensions, extroversion, neuroticism, and psychoticism, which underlie various traits. The Big Five model, comprising of openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism, also known as OCEAN, as a mnemonic, is widely accepted and reflects fundamental dimensions of personality across diverse populations. Each theory offers valuable insights into the complexities of personality, shedding light on the myriad factors that shape human behavior and development. Observational learning, also known as social learning or vicarious learning, occurs when individuals learn by watching and imitating others. This process is supported by mirror neurons, which fire both when we perform an action and when we observe someone else performing that action. Social cognitive theory, developed by Albert Bandura, emphasizes the role of interactions between individuals and their environment in shaping behavior. Unlike behaviorism, which focuses solely on environmental influences, social cognitive theory recognizes the importance of cognition in behavior change. The Bobo doll experiment conducted by Bandura is a notable demonstration of observational learning. Children observed an adult model displaying aggressive behavior towards a Bobo doll. And later, many of these children imitated the aggressive actions when given the opportunity. This experiment is often cited in debates regarding influence of violent media, such as video games and movies, on aggressive behavior in children. However, the experiment also revealed a learning performance distinction. While children may learn a behavior through observation, their motivation to perform it may vary. In a follow-up experiment, children who observe aggressive behavior being punished were less likely to imitate it. 
but offering rewards for imitation increase the likelihood of performing the behavior. This highlights the importance of motivation in determining whether learned behaviors are actually exhibited. To learn and replicate a behavior, individuals must pay attention to the model, remember the behavior, be capable of imitating it, and feel motivated to do so. For instance, if somebody wants to learn to draw a star, they need sufficient attention span, memory retention, and imitation ability, as well as motivation to practice and master the skill. Thus, while, obser while observational learning can occur, whether individuals choose to perform learned behaviors depends on various factors, including their motivation and reinforcement. Thank you guys so much for watching. I uh, really appreciate it. If you guys like the video, feel free to give it a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, we'll be going over Chapter 7 in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.